Hello, I'm Mark Nanneman. Today, let's talk about how to populate a Microsoft Word template with a variable number of images from a Microsoft Forms submission. So here we have our Word template, and you can build this um, on your desktop or you can start in SharePoint. That might be the smartest way to do it. Put the Create the document in SharePoint where you want it to be, and then open it for editing, and then select the option to edit in your desktop app. You do need to edit this in your desktop app to create a Word template. You also need to have developer enabled. So this developer tab here on your ribbon, if you don't have that, you go to file, you click on options, and then you go to customize ribbon, and then you look for developer, and you make sure that's checked. Next, it's best to create, to add a table or grid to position your items how you want them. So I've added this table here and I adjusted the border style to make it how I want it to look. And then I basically gave it three rows, two columns. And the first column for each row, I added a picture, an image control right here, picture content control. So I added one of those to each one and I adjusted the picture format. I just went here and selected an option that I liked. And then for each image control, picture control, you need to set the properties and name it. So you name, I named the first one image one, the second one is image two, and then image three. And it's important to name these to give you an understanding of the correct order that they're going to be in because when you're inside Power Automate, um, they show up in a random, these parameters show up in a random order on the populate a Microsoft Word template action. So they won't show up in the alphabetical order or the order you add them even. So um, it's you need to name them properly so you know which image to put where. And then for each image, I also over here in the next column, I added another table, a nested table, two columns by two rows, name and type. I've got image name one, image type one, next one, image type two, or image name two, and image type two, etc. Then you save this and you make sure it's in SharePoint where it can be accessed by Power Automate Flow. Next, to demonstrate this, we're going to need a Microsoft form. So I built a very simple form here just for demo purposes called Pictures Form. It's got one question, and then it's got an upload file option. And we gave it a limit of three pictures since three is the max. We uh, restrict this to images, and that's all we need to do there. I also want a placeholder image in case the user does not submit the full three images so that we can put something as a placeholder into the slot on the Word template. We could just do a blank. We could do like a one pixel sized image um, or we could have some kind of placeholder. So I use Grok here. I just said draw a placeholder image for an image upload control in an app. And I, I use this one down here, the, the last one in the lower right. I just saved that and named it and uploaded it into SharePoint where I want to use it from. Okay, here we are inside of our Power Automate flow. We have a Microsoft form trigger when a new response is submitted and it's tied to our pictures form. We have a get response details. It takes the ID from the trigger. It's also tied to the same form. Next, I initialize an array. I call it V pictures array. Type is array. Here I'm creating an array of the uploaded files from the form submission. So when the, when the submission details come back, it puts the information for each uploaded file into an array, but it's in text format. So we can't, we can't manipulate it, we can't loop through it. So we have to convert that from text from a string to a JSON array. And so I've got this compose action here just called compose pictures array. And all it's doing is it's taking the the output of the file upload array and wrapping it in this JSON function here. So basically all I got to do is hit dynamic content, find the uploaded files array from the response details. It's called upload pictures. It's the name of the question or the prompt in the response. 
are in the uh, form. And then I get that in here and then I just type JSON and put parentheses around that output from the get response details action. Next, we have an apply to each loop. So we need to loop through this array to download the pictures. So for the input on my apply to each loop, I'm doing a coalesce. I'm grabbing this composed pictures array, but I'm coalescing that with a blank table. So I put JSON around a string with these two brackets. And that's the default. The reason here for this is because um, I have it, like if the user doesn't upload any pictures, I don't want the flow to fail. So it's going to go with, if this has contents up here, if it's not null, then it'll go with that. If that is null, we'll default to this blank array. So it won't fail, but it also won't collect anything. So that's good. Then next, for each item, we're grabbing the metadata. So I'm grabbing the item ID property as the identifier of the file. So in that array that comes from the trigger, from the get response details, in that array, it's going to have the, the unique identifier for each file, and the files are going to be in OneDrive. And so all you got to do to reference that is do item question mark ID. To get the content, we do the same thing. We reference the item ID of each item in the loop. Finally, we do an append to array action where we append a record to our array variable. To make it really easy to reference later on, I'm giving each property a one letter name. So I've got N for name, T for type, I for image. So for the name, I'm grabbing the name property from the get file metadata. For the type, I'm grabbing the media type from the get file metadata. For the I image, I'm just taking the body of this get file content. So that's done by simply going here and clicking file content. The other ones I would grab for the name property up here, I didn't go with name, I went with name without extension this is the one I used. And just another note, this name up here, it appends the user's name to the end of the file. There's an underscore, and then it's got your full display name for the user who uploaded the file. If you don't want that in the name, you could do something like, we could go up here and we could do, we could do this. We could say split. Split name without extension, and we'll split by an underscore, and then go first. And that will that will take the part of the file name that doesn't have the the um, the username at the end. Next, we're going to grab the default image that we'll use in case not all the images are uploaded. So I'm grabbing it here. It's called placeholder.jpg. All right, next we're going to the fun part here where we populate our Microsoft Word template. So we just point this towards our template where it resides in SharePoint. And then here are the properties or the, the controls that we added in Microsoft Word. And they have the, the name that we gave each property. And you can see how it sort of shows up in this random order. It's not the order I added them, and it's not the order that I named them. So they're random. This is why it's important to name them to help you navigate this, especially if you have a lot of controls in your template. So I'll just look for the first image. Here it is, image one. The way I handle the default image here and the way I make it to where it doesn't fail if there aren't enough um, images uploaded, what we do is we use a coalesce, and we also reference our array properly with these question marks here. The first possible object we want to pass here is the image from the pictures array. And since we're on image one, that's going to be the first item in the array. So we do a question mark, and then we do these brackets with zero. The zero is the index of zero, the first index in the array. 
use the question mark so that it won't fail if there isn't one there. And so now we've got the first one if it's there. And then we also want to grab the image content property, which we named I. So we do another question mark and then we put I inside these brackets. So if there's an image there, we grab it. If there isn't, we go with the default image content, which you just select by hitting dynamic content and you click here on file content under default image. So that's for image one. For image two, it's a similar, except here we change the index. We increment the index appropriately. Since we're on image two, that's index of one, since we start with index of zero. So we have question mark one, and then question mark I. And then the default is, again, that default image. For the name properties, it's almost exactly the same, except what I do is I coalesce, I coalesce that array we made above. I'm calling on the first one, index of zero, and then the property in for name. And if that's not there, I default to not applicable. And I do the same thing with type. I'll go down here to image type two. For image type two, we call on our array variable. We look for index of one with the question mark, so the question mark here, and then the one in the brackets means we're looking for index of one, which is a second item, and then we look for the property called T for type. If that's not there, we default to not applicable. And you just carefully do that for all of these items, make sure you get the indexes right, and make sure you get the properties right. Next, we need to save our Word template that we've populated, we need to save it as a Word file. We need to make sure it has a unique name. So the easiest way to do that is just use the GUID function here. So that makes a unique GUID. Another thing you could do is you could type, you could give it a name that you, that's dynamic from some response. You know, it could be the responder's name or it could be some other detail that comes from the get uh, response details. Um, and then you could to make it unique, you could add in something like uh, UTC, you could do format, date time, UTC now, and then you could grab the hours, minutes, and seconds, which most of the time will be unique. And you could put that at the end. That's like a quick and easy way to make a unique file name that has that's legible. If I don't care about it being legible, I can just give it a unique identifier. And obviously also you pass the file, the content of your populated Word document. You just click this to populate the file with the output of this action. Then I do a get file properties. And I'm just doing this so that I can grab the thumbnail and put the thumbnail in the email. It's not really necessary, but I'm grabbing the properties of this file I just created. And now down here, I'm sending myself an email. It's going to me. And for the HTML, the email, all I'm doing is I have an image element in here in HTML. And the source is going to be the thumbnail, large, the large thumbnail link from Get File Properties. And then under attachments, I have the name and I call it Word Template Demo. And then I'm doing that trick I talked about earlier with the format date time. In this case, I'm using the year, month, date, and then a space, hours, minutes, seconds. And it has the Word document extension. And then the content bytes is going to be the output of the populate a Microsoft Word template. And that's all there is to the flow. All right, let's give this a test. So here is our Microsoft form. I'm just gonna type in answer. And then I'm gonna click Upload File. Here is a folder of images I created with um, AI, just some random images. So let's pick, uh, I'll pick this one and I'll pick this one. I'll say Open. I don't know why it's taking a while to upload. All right, hit Submit. Okay, the flow has run, and this is the email I received. 
So here is the first image I uploaded. Here is the second one, and here is the placeholder. This is the thumbnail that I put into the HTML of the email. We can click here on the attachment to see the actual Word document. So here is our populated Word template. We have that first image, the second image, and the name is block grid white. The type is an image slash JPEG. Down here we have desktop neon image slash JPEG. And here we've got the placeholder and each one says not applicable. All right, well, there you have it. That's how you can populate a Microsoft Word template with a varying number of images uploaded to a Microsoft form submission or a Power App or any other source. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you find it helpful. You can check out the blog posts in the description below and have a great day.